So just needed to um, make that announcement. But this is the Grand Canal Connection Project meeting. This is the noon meeting. It's entirely on Zoom, this meeting. There will be another meeting for those who want to attend in person at 5.30 p.m. tonight at the Field Services Assembly Hall. Um, a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, any projects that receive all or a portion of federal funds are being asked to do a, participants are being asked to do a self-identification survey. So we've provided you the link in the chat for the self-identification survey. I would use the term survey loosely. It literally is just one question. It's obviously entirely voluntary, but if you could take the time to do that um, during the meeting or shortly thereafter, we sure would appreciate it. Um, later in the meeting, we will talk about there is a link to a project survey, which is obviously a little more comprehensive. Um, without further ado, I would like to turn the meeting. Oh, I do have a couple items I have to share. Sorry about that. Um, this is another one, this non-discrimination notice to the public. I'll just read it quickly. This is another thing we've been asked to share with all participants. The city of Tempe under title six of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and related statutes must ensure that no person in the city of Tempe shall on the grounds of race, color, national origin, sex, disability, and age be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any federally funded program or activity it administers. Additional protections are provided by Tempe City Code, Chapter 2, Article 8, Anti-Discrimination Ordinance. Um, any person who believes that they have been aggrieved by an unlawful discriminatory, discriminatory practice may file a complaint with Joantha Guthrie, Title VI Coordinator for the City of Tempe, and it provides her phone number 480-350-8875 or Joantha, Joantha Guthrie at Tempe.gov. So back to the meeting itself. Chase Wallman is our senior transportation planner with the city of Tempe. He's my esteemed colleague and I'm turning the meeting over to him to share the PowerPoint. Thank you, Chase. Great, thanks Elizabeth. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, um, virtual participants, can yes. you assure Chase that you can hear him as well? Yep, looks like we got a yes, so we should be good to go. Um, well, yes, thank you everyone for taking your lunch hour today to join us for an update on the Grand Canal Connection Project. Um, as mentioned, my name is Chase Wallman. I'm a senior transportation planner with the city of Tempe. Um, and this will be an update to our revised designs based off of the feedback we received on our first round of public meetings in October. So as a refresher for those who weren't able to attend in October, this is the Grand Canal Connection Project, which is aimed to connect the Rio Salado North Bank path with the Grand Canal path and the Crosscut Canal path. Um, so in doing so, we are proposing four different connections. Um, and the first connection is along the west side at Priest Drive. This is aimed to connect the Rio Salado North Bank path with the grand development, which has an entrance to the existing Tempe Grand Canal, uh, and then continues to Washington Street, where we have a light rail station, as well as existing bike lanes along Washington and then north along Priest Drive. Uh, another part of this project will be the extension of Tempe Grand Canal to our border with Phoenix, uh, and then north along 56th Street. So this is proposing to extend that path west, west to 56th Street and then north to connect to existing bike lanes along Washington Street, as well as going north along 56th Street. And then on the east end of our project, we have our connections from the Rio Salado North Bank path to the uh, east end of Tempe Grand Canal, and that's gonna be provided uh, via Lakeview Drive. And then finally, we have the Crosscut Canal to Tempe Grand Canal connection, 
um, which is proposing an off street path and a new pedestrian signal at Mill Avenue um, to connect the uh, western entrance to the Crosscut Canal over to an existing pedestrian signal that connects to Tempe's Grand Canal on the east side. So those are the four segments that we're going to be going over today. So first we'll go ahead and go through the priest drive segment. So this video on the right here is just to get you oriented is near Tempe Center for the Arts and the Elmore Pedestrian Bridge. We're going to work our way west towards Priest Drive along the Rio Salado North Bank path. And this will take us to the start of our Priest Drive improvements. So what we're proposing here is to widen the existing sidewalk along the east side of Priest Drive from eight to 10 feet uh, to provide for a side path condition um, that will allow bi-directional uh, bicycle travel from the Rio Slot North Bank path to this entrance here at the Grand Development, and then finally continue to Washington Street, where we'll, we'll terminate there. So this is a video that's gonna zoom out and show you the alignment here. So in order to do this, to widen the existing uh, priest drive sidewalk along the east side of Priest Drive. Um, we'll be proposing to narrow the existing travel lanes. So not, not remove any of the travel lanes, but just narrow the existing width. So um, this previous slide is showing the existing conditions and what we're proposing here, um, providing for that buffer space and then a uh, 10 foot wide path. This is an existing condition photo looking north along that East Priest Drive sidewalk. And then after the widening. And then this is looking at some of the existing priest drive ramps uh, near the 202. So this is looking south. Um, this is something that we received feedback on at our initial first round of public meetings, uh, just wanting to have the, have the desire to increase visibility uh, for bicyclists making these connections, especially um, near these um, near these ramps, on ramps and off ramps for the 202. Um, so what we're proposing here is signage um, to make vehicle users aware of the potential cross traffic with the bicyclists, as well as high visibility crosswalks, and then uh, making ADA directional ramp improvements. There was a specific item that was brought up to um, also increased visibility by trying to uh, move these ramps as far west as possible so that um, they were a little bit more visible before uh, any turning vehicles making a right. So that's something that we're, uh, it's not shown today in these plans, but we're going to uh, push these ramps as far west as feasible. Uh, it's just under a review right now with uh, ADOT. So they are, they are reviewing that, but that was one item uh, feedback that we received, but, excuse me, um, but we're, we're still getting our ADOT review. So we'll be, we'll be showing that in the future. This next portion, this is showing the Grand Canal to 56th Street connection. So on the east end here, this is our existing uh, Tempe Grand Canal, which was completed as part of the Grand Development. Uh, and then along here is our border with the city of Phoenix along 56th Street. Uh, so this is a two-parter that we're proposing improvements. So the um, first part is an extension of the existing multi-use path to the west. Um, this will extend about 800 feet to the west until we get to the 56th Street alignment. And then it will continue north They'll continue north as an off street path connecting to the end of this driveway here along 56th Street. So what we're proposing here is a continuation of the concrete multi-use path. Uh, we'll be proposing lighting and landscaping here, which will be on the west side of this drive, um, which is identified by this development as a future roadway. Um, so we're taking that into consideration as far as uh, making sure we don't have any conflicts and providing an uh, off-street path that doesn't have to interfere, interact with any additional driveways for that future roadway. So we're proposing the extension of that off-street path until we get to the south end of this driveway. And then once we get to this driveway on 56th Street, uh, we are proposing to have protected bike lanes go north to Washington Street 
Um, so we will be proposing uh, a raised channelization device. Um, you can see some of them existing today at Ash Avenue as part of the streetcar project. So we will be proposing uh, to implement these here along 56th Street, uh, which will be provided in a buffer space separating the bike lanes from the vehicular lanes. And then that will take you to Washington Street where we have existing bike lanes along Washington, uh, as well as going north along 56th Street. The next portion of this project, now we're on the east side. This is connecting the east end of Tempe Grand Canal with the existing Crosscut Canal. So this is the off-street pathway, which on the west side will connect to an existing pedestrian signal uh, that was built as part of the light rail. And so that will be the connection on the west side. Once you make that connection, uh, you can connect to the Grand Canal path entrance. And then from there, as we work our way east and north towards the Crosscut Canal, we're proposing to utilize the area behind the first solar parking garage um, and in between that and the SRP Crosscut Maintenance Facility. So we'll be proposing um, an off-street pathway there with lighting, uh, which will connect to a new proposed pedestrian signal at Mill Avenue uh, to provide that connection over to the existing crosscut canal. This is an image here showing that existing pedestrian signal that I mentioned that's already been built as part of um, the light rail project. This middle photo is just showing the existing conditions in between that parking garage and the SRP crosscut maintenance facility. And then this third photo is on the east end and this is looking north. This would be the landing uh, area for the west side of the new proposed pedestrian signal. This graphic below is the original, um, the preliminary concept that was developed that we showed in our October public meetings. And then this is our new, uh, really the only thing that has changed is that we received feedback uh, about uh, cross-cut canal path users uh, there is a, a fear that they would uh, go directly across without looking at the roadway. Um, so there was a mention for uh, potentially improving safety here um, by making path users slow down and have more of a circuitous route going to that east side of the pedestrian signal. So instead of a directly straight approach, um, we're proposing uh, this slight radii here. Um, that will uh, have path users slow down before reaching the intersection. And then finally, we have our Lakeview Drive improvement. So this is again on the east end, and this is looking to connect the Rio Salado North Bank path to the Grand Canal. So this is a view looking north. We're at the north side of Tempe Town Lake uh, near the area of Marquis Dieter. You can see here there's an existing staircase that takes users from the Lakeview Drive area up to the Mill Avenue sidewalk, and there's also existing bike lanes. We're working our way north here um, where we meet Washington Street. On the west is our path entrance to the Grand Canal. And now we're gonna be looking east, again, going towards Mill Avenue. We're gonna make a turn north here. And this is where we have a sidewalk app. So just under the 202, we have some missing sidewalk. And this is something that came up during our preliminary design phase um, back in 2019, uh, where there was mentioned that there is not a very good accessible route, um, an ADA accessible route, getting users from the Mill Avenue sidewalks down to the Tempe Town Lake area. So that is a part of this project um, that we included into uh, the scope of this project. So this red line uh, is showing the entirety of the Lakeview Drive. So Lakeview Drive is this horseshoe that connects uh, to Washington and Curry. So what we're proposing here is uh, buffered bike lanes along the entirety of Lakeview Drive, a new high visibility crosswalk connecting users from the Rio Salado North Bank path, it's north side of Tempe Town Lake, over to where this existing staircase is. Uh, from there, we are uh, proposing to introduce a new ADA accessible route. Um, so there'll be another option besides a staircase to get uh, an accessible connection over to the Mill Avenue sidewalk area. And then finally, this, this last red gap here, um, this last red gap here is 
the uh, missing sidewalk portion for Mill Avenue. So we're proposing new sidewalks here to connect to existing sidewalks along Mill Avenue. Uh, and my apologies for the cursor, I have been using the wrong mouse. So you guys have not seen many of my mouse movements here. So my apologies for that, but I'm happy to go during the Q&A question period and, and point out these a little bit more closely. This is a view looking west along Lakeview Drive in our existing bike lanes, as well as the existing pedestrian crossing over from the staircase area to the north side of Tempe Town Lake. This is a uh, view of the proposed improvements, which include uh, buffer bike lanes, high visibility crosswalk, and the new directional ramps here. Uh, in addition, we were also asked to explore to see if those raised channelization devices could be included in this area. Uh, this is something that's not included in the rendering, but it's something that we're continuing to explore. This area of Lakeview Drive um, also is hosts uh, special events uh, like Ironman and, and other larger special events. Um, so right now we're doing an alternatives review um, to see um, what kind of vertical element that we could place here that will um, be feasible for this segment of Lakeview Drive. Um, so we are we are developing some alternatives here um, because there was a desire to put in from our last public meeting to put in more than just a buffer like what we're proposing along 56th Street. Uh, so we're just working internally with more stakeholders, including special events staff, as well as Tempe Police Department and our right of way maintenance folks um, to try to develop an alternative that we could uh, use here since Lakeview Drive is used by uh, many different groups within the in the city here. So that's something that we're continuing to explore along this segment. This is a view of our proposed concept back in October. This is what we showed. Uh, mainly the feedback here and what's changed is the accessible route. We received feedback from the public as well as through our ADA Disability Commission about um, the desire to move the ramp entrance closer to the existing sidewalk. Um, so we reiterated the design uh, to respond more directly to that. So what we're proposing here from our previous is moving that ramp entrance over to the east so that it's more of a direct connection to the existing Mill Avenue sidewalk, uh, as well as we were asked to pursue a larger radii for these ramps. So you can see here, these were very tight angles. Um, this ramp is meant for pedestrians, but there was still a desire to have larger radii here. So you weren't having these tight turns going up and down the ramp. Um, so that's something that we also included as part of this, this design iteration. So that's that's the main difference here. Otherwise, you'll see that we're calling out the buffered bike lanes along Lakeview Drive, as well as the new sections of sidewalk and then um, directional ramps. Here's a closer look of that same area. Uh, so as other elements, that we were not showing uh, previously, but showing this round that we want to get additional feedback on is that we are proposing a rest node at the top of this accessible route. So this is a pretty good vantage point. Um, and we have a photo at the end of the slide that uh, really shows the, the nice view that we want to take advantage of here. So there is a proposed rest node that will be at the top of this accessible route, as well as the inclusion of landscaping to provide shade along the path. A little bit more visible interest, visual interest. Speaking of the landscape palette, this is our proposed landscape palette, which is something um, that we're asking for your feedback. If there's any species uh, that you think are missing or any edits to this, we would want to hear that on our on our survey specifically. Um, but this palette was chosen because it's drought tolerant. Um, these are native species um, and really complements our climate action plan, which seeks to uh, increase shade for pedestrians and these path users. So this is our proposed landscape palette. Uh, it includes trees, shrubs, and accents. So some of these include thornless mesquite and mulga as far as trees, creosote and gold lantana as, part of, as far as shrubs. And then for cactus and accents, you can see here, but a couple of them are smooth agave and desert marigold to provide some visual interest in, in color along here. So uh, this is something that we'll be asking for feedback on the survey. In addition, speaking to that rest node location, these are some precedent images of other rest nodes at different off street pathways along the city. So what we'll be seeking feedback here on specifically um, is the seating. Um, we've done a lot of different seating arrangements 
uh, depending on the Austrian pathway. So we really want to narrow down as part of this design um, preferences for seeding, whether it's individual type seeding, uh, the materiality of the seeding, if the seeding has a back, if it's a bench, um, things of that nature. So you'll see that included in the survey that we're, we're asking for targeted feedback uh, as far as the seeding. But uh, other elements that this rest node could include are bike loops. Uh, we will, of course, have it lit. There's an option if it's feasible to do solar lighting. Uh, as well as the additional landscape and opportunity for shade with the manufactured shade. And then the final element, um, which is the lighting. This slide is really just to illustrate that we are looking to match the character of the existing environment of where there's existing lighting. So within this project, it's in these four distinct segments. Uh, what we're proposing is just to match the existing character surrounding that. So we'll uh, for example, this left image is the existing Tempe Grand Canal as part of the Grand Development. When we have our path extension going west, what we're going to be proposing is to include the same lighting or continuity. And so we'll do the same for all the other um, portions of the projects. Like we will try to, uh, we will match the Rio Slot North Bank lighting in our Lakeview Drive section. So this, this really just illustrates that you'll see a bunch of different type of lighting poles um, and specifications as part of this project, and as well as that we will look to do solar lighting where it's feasible. And then as far as next steps, uh, we are in our second round of public meetings now. Uh, so this is this is the picture I mentioned of on top of that Lakeview Drive area, just looking south back at Tempe Town Lake in downtown Tempe. Uh, but we uh, took this to the Disability Commission as well as our Transportation Commission to receive their feedback. Uh, we'll be holding the public meeting again, as Elizabeth said, in person tonight at 5.30 p.m. So that'll be our second public meeting. We will have uh, the public comment period open for two weeks. And um, that way we can get capture all the feedback that we don't receive uh, through our online survey. From there, uh, we'll revise the design again based off of that feedback and anticipate completing the 60% design in August of 2023. Uh, assuming that schedule, we would plan to wrap up in the spring of 2023 and start construction in the fall of 2024. And with that, I just wanted to take the opportunity again to thank you for participating and providing your feedback uh, today during this question and answer period. Uh, the project webpage is tempe.gov slash Grand Canal. They'll also have a link to our online survey. Uh, more importantly, it will have all the PDFs of these graphics that I showed today. So you'll be able to zoom in closer and be able to look at these designs a little closer before submitting your feedback on those surveys. Uh, but with that, ET, I'll go ahead and hand it back over to you for our question and answer period. E.T., I think you're still muted if you're talking. Thanks for that, Chase. Um, I also just put the link to the project survey in the chat as well. So you can reach it there as noted at www.tempe.gov forward slash Grand Canal. And we did have a few folks that joined us a little bit later. And so I'm going to provide the link again for the federal survey. Um, that is voluntary, um, but we do ask, it's just one question, if you could fill that out. And we do have some questions that we're seeing. It looks like Rob Fulmer has a question. So let me look here. Did you type that in the chat, Rob, or would you like to state it verbally? I think we've got about 15 folks with us, so I think it'd be fine if you would like to share your question now, Rob. Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you for checking. Okay. Uh, my name is Rob Fulmer. I represent Arizona's uh, breweries, and um, we have a number of breweries here with us today. We've got people from the Shop Beer Co. in Tempe, uh, Bait Brewing Company, which, which is in Tempe and Scottsdale. We've got Pedal House, which is in uh, Phoenix, uh, Mesa, uh, Phoenix Tempe Chandler. Phoenix Tempe Chandler. Um, we've got Hundred Mile Brewing Company, which is in Tempe. We've got Phoenix Beer Co., which is in Phoenix. We're all super interested in this project because uh, it connects a lot of our businesses together. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dylan from the shop who has a specific question and uh, I have a quick follow up. Yeah, no, thanks for putting this together. This is wonderful. Um, I use the Greenbelt bike path all the time. It connects to our brewery here. So I think this is this is excellent. Uh, the specific question I have um, is in regards to the Coyote Stadium. If that does go through, do you see any changes to this? And then shortening, um, taking some of the width away from Priest uh, to expand that bike path there. Um, I guess really, is there consideration that anything changes or this stays the same if the Coyote Stadium gets approved? Sorry, I'm utilizing two mouses here. Thanks for your question. Uh, the This project would not be impacted whether Coyotes were approved um, or denied. It, it doesn't have a bearing on the on the design. This is, uh, the south end is on along the Rio Salado North Bank path. Um, regardless of if the Coyotes were approved or denied, uh, it, there wouldn't, it wouldn't necessitate any design changes uh, and it wouldn't impact that future development by having the narrowing of these travel lanes. It's still meeting the standards. We're not um, eliminating any travel lanes from Priest Drive. We're just reducing the width. Um, there's some excess width there. So it doesn't, doesn't preclude anything in the future. Okay, excellent. Thank you. My follow-up my follow is, and I know this is beyond probably your scope, but um, this project obviously incorporates uh, some of what Phoenix has done with the Grand Canal, um, some of the existing work of a crosscut. Um, I think um, as a, an occasional cyclist and not a full-time cyclist um, uh, that a lot of my peers don't know that this, all, a lot of this is already exists. And um, um, the hairiest part is the, this piece in Tempe, in my opinion, um, because you connect so many different ways and it's easy for us to get lost. So is there going to be some um, uh, multi-government uh, communication of this, of this plan? Or and or wayfinder signs uh, with you know some of the entertainment districts listed, things like that. Is there is there a, a piece for that at all? Yeah, thank you for that follow up question. Uh, there is going to be wayfinding. It's not included in this in this stage of the design yet, um, but there will be wayfinding signage that's proposed that will direct users to these various path entrances. As far as any landmarks, um, any landmark signage like uh, pointing to specific businesses, we don't have that um, as part of this wayfinding package. It would just be basically saying um, crosscut canal this direction, perhaps distance marker saying uh, this way in half a mile. They'll say Rio Salado North Bank Path um, over here. Uh, so we'll call out landmarks specifically. There could be some ancillary wayfinding signage as well um, as part of the Rio Salado master plan efforts. Um, so there was a master plan done um, to look at the future of that Rio Salado Tempe Beach Park area, but along all of Rio Salado, uh, I know wayfinding was a big component of that. And that's probably where you would see more of that landmark distance, um, landmark signage. Uh, as far as intergovernmental, um, there is wayfinding signage that we can explore, um, such as the Tempe, or sorry, the Valley Path Network, which is a regional path network. Um, so we can talk to our colleagues in Phoenix and see if they have signed Grand Canal uh, that way or parts of the Rio Salado. We could look at incorporating some more of these regional off street path routes um, that are not Tempe specific. So we, we could definitely pursue that as far as um, talking to our colleagues and seeing at Mesa and Phoenix and all these Scottsdale, these direct path connections, what kind of regional signs are using and if they are looking to sign it in that way. And then we could provide that wayfinding signage for consistency. So that's definitely something we could explore with our colleagues in the other cities where we make this direct connection. Thank you. I put my email in uh, the chat if someone wants to reach out uh, because I do want to connect um, some other uh, businesses that aren't here. Um, and I, I, I was remiss in not seeing that Hus was on the call as well, also in several of, of the cities involved. So thank you. Thank you. ET, you're muted again. Seems to be a reoccurring problem on Monday. Sorry about that. 
Um, Katie also indicated she wanted to ask a question. So um, you can proceed, Katie. Uh, thank you. Um, so I still have concerns about uh, cars turning right on either from Priest onto the highway ramp or off the highway ramp. Is there a way to maybe have, at least for the off ramp, have a no turn on red so that pedestrians and bicyclists crossing on Priest won't potentially be hit? Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. I, I don't have anyone here from our traffic engineering team, but I'll forward that and get their feedback on that to see if that's feasible. That's a great suggestion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, did anyone else have a question or comment they'd like to share with Chase? Also, if you're at all uncomfortable about speaking it, you're welcome to put it in the chat and we'll read it for you. I will say there is a chat, there is a question by William in the chat. There sure is, thank you. William posed the question, I understand that there is a gap on the west side which will remain gravel. How long is that section and will it be resistant to erosion? Uh, I, that's probably the Grand Canal area, I would imagine. Um, let me go to that and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you say William asked that question, E.T.? Yes. Okay, so let me know if I'm going the, the wrong way, William, but let me get to that image. I think it'll show it a lot better. Okay, yes. So this is the area that William's talking, which is the west end of the um, Tempe Grand Canal. So what we're proposing here is to continue this pathway I'll try to use my mouse this time, although it's a little shaky here. Uh, continue this pathway west. And then once we get to 56th Street, it would go north. Um, so the pathway would continue. We're not, we're not leaving at a, at a, at a dead, at dead end here. Um, so the pathway is going to go west from the existing Grand Canal. It's going to meet this asphalt road here. This asphalt road is going to uh, remain. It's an asphalt maintenance road. It's going to remain here today, so that'll connect to the south end of our off street pathway. The Phoenix portion of the Tempe, or excuse me, of the Grand Canal ends here. This is a little bit older of an aerial, so it doesn't show it. So this is Phoenix's uh, Grand Canal path. And then we have a private railroad crossing here. So what separates our pathway here is going to be this asphalt maintenance road. So there's no actual gravel that we're terminating the path at. Instead, we're continuing the path west and then north until we get to this cul-de-sac area of 56th Street. And then the rest of the improvements there will be on street. Uh, so I'll ho hopefully that answered your question, William. Let me know if you have a follow-up to that. Yes, there is existing asphalt there. That's part of a maintenance road that will remain today. So there will be asphalt connecting uh, both of those paths. But our path continues north to 56th Street. Thank you. Earl also has a comment. Go ahead, Earl. Uh, yeah, I want to just follow up on Katie's uh, statement about the off ramps. Um, if you're talking to traffic engineers, there's a couple other things I could suggest. Uh, I'm with the Coalition of Arizona Bicyclists. Um, one is to uh, put a very distinctive stop strip, uh, a setback from the crosswalk, along with possibly a sign that says a stop here. I mean, it seems silly to me when I see those on the road, but there are situations where I think you want to tell drivers, 
stop behind this stop, this stripe and don't stop in the crosswalk or a sign that says keep the crosswalk clear. Um, you know, I think that the point is well taken coming through there quite a bit myself is that, you know, people aren't looking for pedestrians and they, people aren't looking for people riding their bikes. So um, they tend to creep up into that crosswalk and it'd be best to try and keep that clear. Definitely, yeah, thank you for that additional feedback. I took down those notes, so we'll, we'll add that to the list. Did anybody else have a question or comment for Chase? And also don't forget the survey for the project is at www.tempe.gov with the forward slash Grand Canal. And then also in the chat a few times is that federal survey that just has the one question, but we really would appreciate it if you fill that out. But if you have any additional comments or questions, um, we had it booked till one, we're happy to stay with you and answer them. Doesn't look like it, Yeah, it looks like you're getting some thank yous in the okay. chat. We, we appreciate those. And I'm glad um, that the brewery folks and the other members of the public were able to share some of their concerns and input. We appreciate it. Um, the survey is a great instrument for all of you as well to share some additional input and it'll make sure that it's recorded in that manner. So. We'd really appreciate it if everyone would take the time to fill out the project survey. And we will share the same information at tonight's meeting, which is at 5.30 p.m. in Field Services Assembly Hall, right over there at Priest um, and the Rio Salado. It's gonna be just uh, north of that intersection, Field Services Assembly Hall. We'll have some signage out in A-frame. So if anyone knows someone who missed today's noon meeting and wants to join us, we'd be happy to have them. And we'll also get this posted, right, ET? Yeah, it takes a little bit, but we'll definitely get today's meeting, which was uh, or is being recorded, will also be posted. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, and Chase and I both made an effort to capture the questions. Chase, it looks like we have a gentleman named Mike who's just coming in now, so we'll see. Hi, Mike. We're to the question and answer part of the meeting now. Um, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, the presentation recently concluded, but it's going to be on the website there at tempe.gov forward slash Grand Canal, as is the survey. And Mike, we do have the in-person meeting opportunity this evening at 5.30 p.m. If you wanted to take advantage of that, it's at the Field Services Assembly Hall. So that's at Priest, just north of Rio Salado. Excellent. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Priest at Rio yeah. Salado. You're welcome. Yeah, we'll have an A-frame out there on Priest, so... Excellent. And what time is that again? I'm sorry. 5.30 p.m., sir. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. I think everybody on this meeting, we've addressed all the questions in the chat and uh, looks like people are maybe signing off to get to their lunch break. So please uh, let us know if we missed your question or if you have an additional one. Right, I did not. I just wanted to be more uh, more engaged in my uh, in my community. Thank you. 
Cool. How did you find out about the meeting? Uh, well, I have a card uh, for quite a while from a, 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 a Christy Arnold, who's in my immediate Indian Bend neighborhood. Um, yeah. And, I, and I, I've not been able to, well, I, they're accessible, but I was kind of was looking to try to find their uh, uh, their meeting agenda for uh, for this month. And then, uh, so I just looked up Tempe, uh, saw this was going on. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to jump on this. And, and just and get myself just be start I just need I've been meaning to do it for years but I just want to be more you know involved somehow okay well we welcome your involvement and yeah you're welcome to come to the in-person meeting if you're free there's also a different path we'll be talking about on Wednesday so oh no kidding yeah there's no shortage of meetings or events this time of year but we'd like to thank everybody for coming today and uh, taking time out of your day to join Chase and I on Zoom. And um, he shared a lot of important information. It also will be available on the website, the presentation and the project survey. And as Chase mentioned earlier, there's some graphics that you can spend a little bit more time on before you take the survey um, in case you want to take a little bit of a deeper dive or look at them more closely. Um, there's four path connections happening as part of this project. Did you have anything else you wanted to share, Chase? Uh, I did not. Thank you all for your attendance today and providing your feedback. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And maybe we'll see you later, Mike, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. Have a good one.